Welcome back to week 11 of Sip the Tatter Presents Ravens Roundup. It's me, Coach Evans, and I'm here. I don't have my purple Kool-Aid today, but uh, we're going to get right into um, the meat and potatoes of this video. Now, what, is, what this video is about is Lamar's progression. Just simply looking at things he did well versus the Texans that he probably would not have done well last year. And this is probably his 16th or 17th start. So right around being the end of his rookie year, if he had been a starter from the jump in. I'm amazed that the progression this guy's made from, you know, start in week, I think 11 last year, up until now. Uh, maybe 13 last year. I don't I remember the exact week. But I'm just, it's amazing. It's, I, you know, I thought he would progress, but not like this. Not like this. So let's just kind of get into the few things I saw. And I didn't I didn't pick all the big splash plays like you've probably seen on the four little networks. I picked some little subtle plays and, and one splash play to kind of talk about. Let's dive right into it. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button. And also, uh, I'll get back with my comments as soon as I can. And I hit a like button too. Hit the like button. Let's start. We're going to talk about ball placement. And we talked about him and his mechanics and, and how much he worked in the offseason. And this is one of the examples of right here of him just being able to throw the ball to a spot where only his guy can get to it. But only his guy can get to it. And that, that throw was, it's a little late, but the ball placement is is what's important. And you'll see Hurst right here. He's going to come across the screen. Hurst is coming across. Okay, now. The ball should be coming out now. Should be. So without without the ball coming out now, this is allows 51 to kind of close in on Hurst. But when Lamar does decide to throw it, he throws it high and away. So the only person who can get this ball is Hurst. Look at that placement. Right over his hand, in the Hurst's hand. Great catch by Hurst also. Now, not only does, does he put it in a place where only Hurst can get it, he gets it to, you know, gets it to him quick enough where Hurst can now turn around and see what's coming and not take a leap. So he's able to get Yak after that. He got another five or six yards. So not only did he get good ball placement, on top of the negative part is he was kind of late. Good ball placement, and he gave him enough, you know, gave him enough of a throw, a good throw, to protect himself one, then two get yet, protect himself one, and not be strung out and get blasted after he catch it, and then get yet. Last last year Lamar couldn't have done that, or wouldn't have done that. Right, let's move on to play two. I got not forcing the action, and so I'll stop it when I want to show you what exactly what I'm talking about. Straight drop back. He takes off running, and, you know, I advocated for this to be the way he get his running yards at the beginning of the year. But let me show what I'm talking about by not forcing the action. So, obviously, you got a straight drop back right here. Now, you got he's covered, he's covered, he's kind of uncovered, he's covered, he's covered. We ran empty. Now, he he's not even looking in sneeze direction right now, so sneeze not an option. So, he's going to slide up in the pocket. So, it's a good job of sliding up in the pocket, still looking downfield. Now at this point, he can either, I can't tell exactly who he's looking at, but it's on this side of the field. I don't know if it's at this guy or Snead. He could flip this ball out there to Snead. But if you see where this defender is, if he flips the ball, if we, if we could draw a straight line to Snead, this guy's in position to undercut that and go to the house. Which, last year Lamar may have tried to force that. This year Lamar, mm -mm. I'm going to go through my progressions to the last minute, then I'm going to get out. So at this point right here, he decides to run, which is great. Because he, obviously he has a spy right here, but most of these guys are in man. So when Mark Andrews turns it up, that gives Lamar an alley to get the first down. He just outran this cat. Terrible angle by him. Well, no, I'm lying. It was a great angle. Lamar just faster than everybody else. Great angle. They got eight up. Now, by Mark turning and running, he got all this room to run. He, he could have just ran out of bounds. Could have just ran out of bounds right here with the first down. But he can get another extra 10 yards or so, I think. So he's on the what, 44 right now? Gets to the opposing 44. So that's another 10, 13, 14 yards. 
which added to his 86 yard run to total and um, putting us over 200 yards. And you'll watch him slide up in the pocket and you'll see, his, you see him go through his progressions. Let's see, see how his head turns to count the progression. So he's to this side. He's looking at this side of the field right now. Still looking. Now, turns his head to the other side. So that's going through your progressions. I don't know if it was number two, three, or four, but now he's coming off of the main initial progression. Now, nobody's open. I'm going to run. Hit the forward now fast enough. Now, I could just run the bounce. But because Mark turned up, I got room to run. I'm going to get what I can get without getting a hit. So this is a run without being touched. To all those people that are saying he take too many licks, he just got a 18, 20-yard run and was not touched. Only on the shoestring. Only. So every time he runs the ball, he's not getting hit. So keep quiet on that narrative. All right. Read option type stuff. We got him reading the end. Now let it play through first because the back view is the but you get the uh, meat and potatoes on this play. And it's a simple um, Mark Ingram rush. And most people think, hey, this is just a handoff to Mark Ingram. No. This is, we're reading this guy right here. And depending on what he does is what Lamar's going to do. And again, it goes to his decision making. So you're going to bring Boyle in motion. And Boyle's just going to arc, so he's not going to touch this dude. Let's go back so I can put it right where I want it. As soon as Lamar catches this ball, look, his eyes go to the end. His eyes are here right now. So if this guy crashes down and tries to tackle Mark Ingram, Lamar's going to pull it, and he's going to have Boyle as a lead, a lead blocker. If he kind of slow plays it and keeps his shoulder square like they are now, he's going to give it to Mark Ingram, and Mark Ingram just got to trust the blocking on his right side and hit it. So let's see what. Focus on this guy right here, right, for the time being. Okay, he, he just kind of slow plays it. So by him slow playing it, he can't help, he can't help these guys out here. And we all got blockers for all these guys. And as you see, Ingram hits the hole. Now, had he crashed, had he crashed on Ingram, right? Had he been crashing on Ingram, Lamar would have pulled it. And they might have had numbers because this dude's not blocked right now. Uh, boy would have blocked this dude. He probably could have scraped down on Lamar. But because he slow played it, so this bad communication on their on their part. Because he slow played it, they gave Ingram what he needed to find it. And they ended up with two guys in C gap, which hurt. For these two guys end up in the same gap, which can't happen in the zone zone scheme read. I mean the zone scheme. Two people end up in the same gap, that means a gap open. That's they didn't have gap integrity. I mean we talked about that earlier when we played Cleveland, we didn't have it also. Bop out. And Mark just run hard. It's that simple. And that's simple decision making. Not not rushing it, not predetermining I'm gonna run or whatnot. Just taking what the defense give you. He slow played it, trying to you know trying to play both, and I'm gonna give it to my running back. But we do have a a, a saying when you you know you have running quarterbacks, and I've had a running quarterback almost every year, but this one. Uh, when in doubt, give it. When in doubt, give it. Only time you're really gonna keep this ball is if this end or linebacker or whoever this is we're reading. Just crashes down hard. He decides to slow play it, so you're going to give it. Bam, now it's up the mark to find the hole. Nice little seven, eight-yard run. All right, hitting the bunnies. Bunnies in basketball are layups with nobody there. Um, you know, just simple stuff that you should hit. And if you recall some of the throws last year, these throws were the ones that he was skipping. Watch how open, um, I think this is Boyle. Watch how open he is. These were some of the balls that Lamar just skipped. He's wide open. Nobody's there. Last year, some of these balls landed on like the 35-yard the line. But now he, he's confident. The game's slowing down to him. He's taking his time and just hitting it. Hitting the wide open guys. It's that simple. And y'all can recall you know, some of those throws were skipped to wide open people. And we were part of the narrative that it's going to take him too long to learn how to throw and all that stuff. Watch. Just don't throw a bullet. Just hit the wide open guy. That simple. Hit hit your bunnies. Hit your bunnies. And lastly, I did want to put this on here. I wanted to use a different play. But as I was going through the film, I like, how can I not talk about this? I just gonna I'm just gonna watch it. One, two, three, four, five, six. The seven guy gets him. 
Wow. La Marvelous. The, the seventh guy gets him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Man, man, man. I won't see that again. I just want to watch it for my for my viewing pleasure. From both views. Let's just enjoy this. Take this in. Let me bag it up some more. Take this in. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to talk about what happened, huh? I will on the back view. I was just enjoying it. Man. Imagine. Imagine having to deal with Barry Sanders touching the ball every time. This is what this comes in the mind of. This is a Barry Sanders like run to me. So you got the full house. Her, uh, Hurst is going to arc and really just reading this guy. I think it's this guy. Let's see when it once we play, once it start to play. So yeah, reading that guy. Boyle is coming to block him. So if he if he crashes, you gonna pull it. If he stays like early to play earlier, you should give it to um. To Mark Ingram, man. Ingram going to cut right behind Boyle. Boyle's going to crack that dude. I'm like a wham. And then uh, Bozeman should double here and come off to there. And, and Ingram should hit right up in there. But for some reason, Lamar keeps it. Because to me, this is this is a give. But Lamar keeps it. And I think this is actually a bad read. It's a bad read. But it ended up being a great play. Because you can't tackle our guy. That's one guy. Okay. Let's go back. Go back just a little bit. 59, you're an inferior athlete. So that's one. All right, 94, you're just too slow. All right, you are in no man's land because you're off balance and kind of shuffling. So I'm going to just run past you. Not even going to put a real move on you. See, just get the ball over you. 92, you're too slow too. You're a defensive lineman. Get out of here. 32 kind of got blocked off. So your efforts are null and void. Now we're going to let a boom on 20. And had it not been for 22, he would have laid the boom on 20 and kept running. Boom. He'd have bounced right off of 20 and kept going. Had it not been for 22. So, this hit, we don't want him to take. But after that run, it's, just, it's simply a thing of beauty. We rushed for over 200 yards, like 230-something. And uh, a lot of his passing stats come off play action. And he did a great job of play action. Uh, somebody told me yesterday he had a perfect passer rate. And I didn't see that. Let me check right now before I let you guys go. 139.2. His passer rating for yesterday was 139.2. That's pretty darn close again to perfect. I forgot what the perfect number was, but looking at the stat sheet, his rating was 139.2. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, uh, three letters come to mind. MVP. <laughs> this is Coach Evans with Sip the Tatter Presents Ravens Roundup. This is your first video. Um, Lamar's decision making and his athletic ability and his just overall development as a quarterback. Um, I'll be on later tonight with um, with Ken from Ravens Film Study talking about the Ravens offense. I'll make sure you check that out. On um, I think he has Apple Podcasts and all those other podcasts, but I'll retweet it once he gets it out. And um, the second video will be coming tomorrow for my YouTubers and for my Patreons. That, that video will be out Thursday or Friday for you guys. Uh, the second video is going to be about how we neutralize the best receiver in the NFL, which is uh, New Hopkins. And we're going to talk about some things, what the Ravens did to not necessarily shut him down, but to basically, you know, he wasn't a factor during the game. And um, that's about it for this video. I'll catch you guys tomorrow and, and later on in the week. Make sure you catch that podcast out from um, Ravens Film Study. I'm out. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to Patreon.com backslash Zip the Tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans, and again, thanks everyone for the support. And head on over to Patreon.com backslash Zip the Tally. Oh, 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 oh,